There are now two M2 Mac Minis to choose from. So which one's right for you? Last week, Apple introduced a brand new Mac Mini. It doesn't look any different to this one, which is the M1 version, but inside this new Mac Mini is something quite special. That is the M2 chip, which comes in two flavors, the regular M2 and the M2 Pro. And that means we've now got a Mac Mini that's capable of having a 19 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, and eight terabytes of internal storage. That's at the top end with the M2 Pro version, obviously, but we now have this new entry-level M2 Mac Mini, which costs just £649 in the UK, which is actually less than the previous generation. So, at one end, we have the most affordable way to get into the Mac OS ecosystem, and then right at the other end, we have this super beastly version of the Mac Mini that we didn't have before. And in today's video, I'm going to reveal which one you should buy. Firstly, who's the Mac Mini for? Because if you look at it, it's not the most exciting Mac on the planet. It's not the iMac, it's not the MacBook Pro, it's not the MacBook Air. It's just this little square thing with an Apple logo on the top of it. Who would buy it? As it turns out, a lot of people, and I am a massive fan of the Mac Mini for one very simple reason. It's the most affordable way, as I mentioned earlier, to get into the Mac OS ecosystem. And this time around, with the M2 version, it's even more affordable. And for for lots of people, the Mac Mini is one of the best ways to get a really powerful Mac onto your desktop. This is my M1 version, which I built this business with. I edited about 80 4K videos for this channel on this computer. So put simply, if the Mac Studio is too expensive for you, if the iMac doesn't float your boat, and if you don't need any portability, you need to get a Mac Mini. And now that we have two to choose from, let's get into five things you need to think about when choosing between the M2 and the M2 Pro Mac Mini. We'll start with pricing as always, and in the UK, the base spec M2 Mac Mini costs £649, which is 50 quid cheaper than the previous generation. So immediately, if you want the cheapest Mac you can buy directly from Apple, brand new, and you're going to use it for admin duties, general kind of office stuff, or perhaps you're going to give it to your kid, then the base spec M2 Mac Mini, there's no competition. As a point of comparison, I've been using the base spec M2 MacBook Air as the main laptop behind the scenes for this business, apart from production work, which I'll come on to later. But for everything else, writing, email, general admin, normal computery stuff, it just can't be beaten. And the base spec M2 Mac Mini is basically that laptop in desktop form. Obviously you can spend more on this M2 Mac Mini, so if you spec it up with 24 gigabytes of unified memory, a two terabyte SSD, it comes to 1,949 pounds. The only thing to bear in mind with that is that it takes you into the base model Mac Studio spec territory. You need to apply a bit of common sense there because if you're spending nearly two grand on a regular M2 Mac Mini and then you're looking at the Mac Studio and thinking, does that make more sense, then that computer might be for you. Moving on to the M2 Pro Mac Mini, that starts at £1,399 in the UK. Now you can spec up the M2 Pro Mac Mini quite far as well, so if you add everything, so if you add the 32 gigabytes of unified memory and the eight terabytes of SSD storage, it comes to £4,499, which again, takes you well into serious Mac Studio territory, and again, just apply some common sense if you get that far. If we look at the CPU and GPU cores, firstly, the standard M2 Mac Mini comes with eight CPU cores. You can't change that. And that's fine for most people. You won't notice barely any difference going from eight core to 10 cores of GPU, unless you know exactly what you're doing with those two cores, which again, is a very defined group of people. And the M2 Pro Mac Mini comes with those 10 cores. Is that worth 750 quid, which is the upgrade between the two? Uh, no. You see, it's the GPU where things get really interesting. The standard M2 Mac Mini comes with a 10-core GPU, which is quite an upgrade from the 7- or 8-core version of the M1 chip. But the M2 Pro Mac Mini has a 16-core GPU. So straight away, if you do any kind of video work, whether it's video editing, 3D rendering, lots of Photoshop stuff, and if that work is tied to income, I would get the M2 Pro Mac Mini. If you're a hobbyist with that sort of thing, the Standard M2 with its 10-core GPU is actually far more capable than you might think. 
Right, on to unified memory, and it's always been the case that adding as much memory to your new Mac as possible is a sensible purchasing decision. And that is definitely still the case, but in the world of Apple Silicon, the playing field has been levelled somewhat. Again, a case in point, I've been using 8GB Macs in this business for the last two years with zero issues. I'm not using them for video editing or audio editing, although I have done that in the past in a pinch, and they work fine, but they're used for everything else. So the writing, admin, email, all the normal stuff that goes into building and running a business, those 8 gig M1 machines never falter. So again, if your budget will not stretch any further than the M2 Mac Mini with 8 gigabytes of unified memory, just buy it. If you have got some budget spare, Apple charges £200 per memory upgrade. So if you're going from 8 to 16, it's £200. If you're going from 8 to 24, it's £400 and so on. Just remember that you can't upgrade that memory in the future, so what you pick now is what you're stuck with. So, whereas the standard M2 Mac Mini tops out at 24 gigabytes of unified memory, the M2 Pro version goes up to 32 gigabytes. And it's also worth noting that the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini starts at 16 gigabytes. If you know you need 24 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes, you know you need that much memory. So, if you're in that crowd, that choice is up to you, and you know far better than me why you need that extra memory. But if you're not sure, it just comes back to your budget. And again, if you can't afford any more than the base spec M2 Mac Mini with the 8GB of unified memory, just buy it. If your budget can stretch a bit further, get yourself that upgrade to the 16GB standard M2, or if your budget is even bigger than that, go for the standard M2 Pro, because that has 16GB as standard, and some other stuff, which brings me on to storage. The regular M2 Mac Mini can go from 256 to 2 terabytes of storage for an extra £800, whereas the M2 Pro Mac Mini can go from that 512 gigabyte starting point to 8 terabytes for £2,400. There's some very big numbers there, particularly the pricing, and again, this is where you need to apply some common sense, because Apple storage is very expensive. And unlike the unified memory, it's the one area of this computer that you can upgrade in the future. And the great thing with the Mac Mini is that it sits on a desk. You don't have to worry about carting around storage devices. You can just plug them in, hide them behind it, Done. So my advice with internal storage on M2 Mac Minis, as always, is only spend more money on it if you think you need to, and if you have budget left over right at the end. There are some smaller differences between the M2 and the M2 Pro Mac Mini that you need to be aware of. Both the M2 and the M2 Pro Mac Mini have two USB-A ports, one HDMI port, and a gigabit Ethernet. But the big difference is the Thunderbolt 4 ports, which it's best to think of as USB-C ports because that's how most of us use them. But on the M2 version of the Mac Mini, you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and on the M2 Pro version, you get four. Now, I can't tell you how many ports is right for you, but if you're the sort of person who wants as many ports on the back of your Mac Mini as possible, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is the one to go for. It's a similar story when it comes to displays, so the standard M2 Mac Mini can drive two external displays, whereas the M2 Pro Mac Mini can drive three. So, in summary, you need to look for a balanced spec that doesn't take you into Mac Studio territory. You need to prioritise any additional budget that you have on unified memory rather than internal storage. Remember that if you know you need more unified memory, such as 24GB or 32GB, you know you need more unified memory. And although both the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 Pro Mac Mini can play back and edit 4K and even 8K video, if you're doing any kind of visual work that's tied to income and to a business or to your earnings, then the M2 Pro version is the one to get. More importantly, what are you going to buy? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see my full reaction to Apple's announcement of the M2 Pro, the M2 Max, the new Mac Minis and the new MacBook Pros, keep watching for a link to that video.